Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, it's a joy to be able to bring the good news of Jesus to you. The text that we're going to look at the second Sunday in Lent is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Hopefully you've already heard it being read, and, uh, and you don't need to stop the video to go back. But if you haven't, please stop the video, go back, and listen to it being read. Or you may want to just take out your Bibles and read, read it for yourself. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Uh, several nights ago, I was preparing for a, a church meeting that really about church business. It wasn't a Bible study or anything. Um, and I got a phone call about five minutes before the meeting was supposed to start. And it was from a person that I've been counseling with for quite some time. A person who has never really called himself a Christian and has always sort of considered himself seeking. Well, he asked me a very pointed question. He, first he said, do you have time? I said, well, I've got five minutes. He said, okay, I just wanna know why is it so important that I believe in God or in Jesus? Is it just so that I go to heaven when I die? Well, immediately I thought this is gonna take a lot longer than five minutes. But I also was not about to put him off. I knew that it, this was much more important uh, to talk to him concerning this than it would, was for me to be on time for this meeting I had. And so I, I caught my breath because honestly, it kind of took my breath away. The question did. I've known him a long time and I've, I've talked a lot about Jesus to him, about the love that God has for us and, and the love that he's shown us in Jesus Christ. And I, and I guess I sort of assumed that the gospel would simply take root in him as I continued to profess God's love before him and show him God's love as I loved him. But still, the message of the world is what apparently came through to him. That he must do something, he must believe, he must Try hard to believe in Jesus, to believe in God, so that he can go to heaven when he dies. That that's what it's all about. People, that's the message that the world sends and calls it the gospel. That's the way the world twists our message. And unfortunately, I mean, the church is guilty of it. Believe in Jesus so that when you die, you go to heaven. People, that's not the gospel. The gospel starts with bad news. The gospel starts like this. We came into this world enemies of God. All of us. We were made enemies to God. Each of us is born a sinner, conceived in iniquity. We are condemned already. But this is where the gospel gets good. Jesus came from the Father. And he loved the world so much that he suffered and died for the world. He took on sin. He became sin for us. So that all who believe and trust in what God has done for us through Jesus Christ are now no longer his enemies, but are at peace with God. As we trust in God's love and mercy for us in Jesus Christ, we are at peace with him. We are no longer God's enemies. 
God did not come so that he could cast people into hell. And that's not why he's going to come again. He's coming again to live with us in the new heavens and the new earth. That's what he's doing, coming again. And yet we, we make that into this, this you know, time of wrath, the end of the world. Sounds so ominous and so scary. People as Christians, we should not dread the end of the world. I don't think it's coming for a long time personally. I may be wrong. It might happen tomorrow. And it's good to think that way. But it may, it may be another 10,000 years. I have no idea. But God wants us to live at peace with him now and at peace with one another and to share the good news of Jesus that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And that whoever trusts in him and in what he's done for us has eternal life. Life given to him because we are now no longer his enemies, but we are at peace with God. This is the good news, the gospel. That's what the word gospel means, the good news. And I don't, I'm not really sure if it's good news to say, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to hell. You need to believe in Jesus so that you can go to heaven when you die. We don't even know what heaven is like. Are we really certain that that's so glorious that we're going to give up everything here for something we don't even know about? The idea of making some decision to give up my life here so that I might have life up there is not what Jesus is talking about in this passage when he tells us that whosoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And whoever seeks to find his life will lose it. You see, I think, I think you can make the case that if I decide to you know, be a Christian so that I can find my life and go to heaven when I die, I'm going to make this decision. I think I very well may be guilty of trying to find my life and losing it. But the way that we lose our life for God's sake is to simply surrender to his love and mercy, which leads us to, to follow him. And what does he say? Take up your cross and follow me. In other words, do as I do. Take up your cross. Love others the way I've loved you. This is the Christian life. It's a life of suffering for others. Knowing that we're loved by God. And, and see, what, what so many people don't understand is that when, when we come to a point where we trust in the Lord, the Holy Spirit empowers us and guides us in his ways to lay our life down for others. And so we become loving people, not, not people who choose to do this or that or choose to believe this or that. The whole idea that I can control my own destiny through my own will is so American and so wrong. You can't choose God. He chooses you. And if you're hearing this message 
then guess what? God has chosen you. Because this is how he works. Through his message of the cross. Because it's what has the power to salvation. It's what has the power to melt our hearts. To change us. To make us people who who recognize our sinfulness and our lack and desire peace with God. Knowing that we are wrong, that something is wrong in us. Not that we've just done things wrong, but that there's something off with us that we would even desire to do evil things, selfish things. And then to be brought the word of God, which says, God who created you loves you so much that he took all of your sin and all of your failings upon himself. And now he's, he's offering peace with everyone who trusts in him who trusts in what he's done for us. And the only reason I would ever trust in what he's done is if it bothered me in the first place that I had fallen short. And people, if you're somebody who realizes how desperately you've hurt others, that you have hurt the people that you say you love the most. Your, your spouse, your children, your parents. And you realize that you have wronged others and you've wronged yourself. And maybe you're not even sure that there's a creator, but if there is one, you've wronged him. And I'm here to tell you there is one and you've wronged him. You were his enemy before Jesus. Before Jesus came and took all of your sin and my sin upon himself. And Jesus became the enemy of the Father for that moment in time on the cross. He took our place. And everyone who looks to him and trusts in him and what he's done, we become his friends, no longer his enemy. I said as much of this as I could to the fellow who called me that night. Trying to help him realize that this is not a decision that you have to make. This is something that God's going to do in you as you hear the message of his love. That he loves you. God loves you desperately. He made you and he loves you. And yes, you without trust in him, you are you remain his enemy. But not because he's angry with you. It's it's we who are pushing him away because we want what we want. He loves us. He loves his enemy. And when we trust that he loves us so much that he's in his son, he's no longer our enemy. And what's more, he makes us people who are capable of loving our enemies on this earth as well. And in fact, I have no enemies. People can make me their enemy and I still love them. But because of Jesus Christ, I have no enemies. This is why. It's so important to believe in Jesus. 
because this is what real life is. Before I had Jesus, I was dead. Trusting in Jesus brings us life and life everlasting. Amen.